Today, I would like to share with you just a little bit about Abhyanga. Uh, it's a very important uh, daily routine practice. It's also used in the Panchakarma arena. And I just want to share with you a little bit about the benefits, uh, the kind of oils that you might want to use, and a little bit about how to um, actually do those strokes on the body to apply the oil. So in the classical text, it refers to Abhyanga as anointing the body with oil. So keeping that um, idea that our body is a temple for the soul to reside in during this human experience um, it really helps to bring a lot of reverence to the practice. Um, snehana uh, is the word for oleation in Sanskrit and it also translates as love. So the idea that by applying oil to the body through your own application or whether you're seeing a, a technician or a therapist to do the therapy for you, that that energy of love is being sort of osmotically applied to your body, mind, and senses. Um, it improves strength, um, and not just to the skin, but to the muscles below, to all seven layers of the, of the skin, to all of the organs and tissue systems in the body. Everything receives benefit from the practice of Abhyanga. Dr. Ladd says seven um, layers of skin tr directly translates to the seven datu tish or tissue systems. So just through the application of oil to the body, we are helping to eradicate toxins and elevated dosha from all of the systems and keep them healthy at the same time. I, I like the idea that oil has what I call a push-pull effect so that while it can nourish the nerve endings and the tissue systems and the nervous system, it is also at the same time helping to soften and pull um, toxins or excess dosha out. Um, so it's the intelligence of the oil is really beautiful. Um, all right. So uh, as I mentioned, Panchakarma is a cleansing, very deep and thorough cleansing process that Ayurveda takes a person through. And as part of Panchakarma, you would receive a Bianga. And it's traditionally done in the Purva Karma state, so it's a shamana or palliation practice to help pacify the dosha, not to eradicate them, um, but to pacify them enough to get them to move back to the digestive system so that further healing and cleansing can occur. Um, but it's just meant to really prepare the body for a, a deeper cleansing to happen. And if you're not using it or doing it in part of Panchakarma, you're doing it in part of your home routine or your daily um, exercises. And again, it just helps to bring suppleness to the body. It helps to improve the um, immune system. It acts on ojas, tejas, and prana. Um, it's a vehicle for communication between the body, mind, and senses. And with the skin being the largest organ in the body, roughly 400 square feet of surface area, it's a lot of area for us to apply oil and our own touch. Um, and through that healing intention, it's just a great medium for, for healing to occur. Um, all right, so the lubrication of the tissue helps to also stimulate bile. Uh, pancreatic enzymes are stimulated. The application of oil helps to improve the elasticity of um, tendons and muscles and even the elasticity of blood vessels. It also helps the microvilli, which are in the digestive system, again, stay flexible and supple and just be able to move food through without any disruption or impairment to the absorption of our nutrients. The indications for Panchakarma are many, and because Vata dosha is one of the main dosha that goes out of balance when we start to move into any kind of disease or pathology, um, this is a great practice to use as a preventative medicine to keep that dosha that's so mobile still grounded, lubricated, so there's no drying out. Um, and it's just a really important practice for vata specifically. It does pacify all the dosha, but very specifically vata. And any vata-associated emotions of anxiety or fearfulness or worry, all of those things become pacified. If there's any twitching or muscle spasms, it's a great practice to use. Um, if there's insomnia or any stiffness or inflammation in the joints, again, Abhyanga is a great practice to use. Constipation is a great practice, even if you're just applying oil to the abdomen. 
Uh, and that's something important that Dr. Ladd mentions, that if you don't have time every day, because it is a quite time-consuming practice, that simply applying oil to the soles of the feet, the scalp, and the belly button should be done every day at minimum. Um, it's a pretty luxurious practice, and oftentimes for my clients, it's a difficult one to get them to adhere to or to be compliant with. But even if you just consider that you're gonna do this practice for yourself once or twice a week, you'll start to see benefits. Um, and you start to build a connection with your own body, mind, you, like your muscles become toned themselves just because of the practice or the exercise of applying oil. And you touch yourself in almost every position that you can reach, so you become very um, familiar with the own landscape of your body, so you're able to recognize if there's ever any day that you wake up and something's slightly off, you have a bump or a bruise that you didn't have before. So it just, it really helps with the intention to know thyself on a deeper and deeper level. At first, it seems like it's very superficial, but through the, the dedication to the practice, you really start to unfold a deeper wisdom and you really get to, um, to know yourself pretty well. So even though it's this lovely, luxurious, it seems like it could heal everything, there are some contraindications or times when you wouldn't want to practice Abhyanga. Um, a couple of those are menstruation and pregnancy, definitely contraindicated there. And anytime you have any acute illness, acute fever, flu, cold, um, if you're undergoing radiation or chemotherapy, you do not want to practice Abhyanga because what can happen is that oil can take um, toxins or poisons further into the system if we're doing it at a time when those toxins are high. Um, so we're really doing it as a way to pull sort of, not necessarily dormant, but um, aggravated dosha or toxins that have lodged into deeper and deeper systems. So it's important that we do it when we're feeling a little, um, or that we're not feeling impaired anyway, um, that our immune system is not impaired in any way. So just feeling strong enough to do it. Um, you also would not want to do this if you have any um, eruptions, skin eruptions, or any contagious infections, um, or if there's over swollen or over painful areas in the body, you would not want to apply oil. So really keeping in mind that if there's anything acute, acute pain, acute illness, um, you want to stay away from doing abhyanga. You also want to make sure that you do not do abhyanga too close to eating meals, so at least two hours um, ideally four hours away from having any food in the belly, uh, that would be a better time to do abhyanga. And then again, within three months of receiving any chemo or radiation therapy, you wanna stay away from doing abhyanga. With abhyanga, because Ayurveda is a science or medicine of the individual, and we really try to stay away from generalizing practices um, for people, you also wanna be mindful of the type of oil that you're using. So for vata and kapha, this dosha needs a little bit of heat to help stimulate and pacify it. So sesame oil is great for vata, mustard oil is great for kapha, sesame works for both. Um, sunflower is the, the pretty tri-doshic, you won't aggravate or you, know, you won't cause any harm uh, to any of the dosha if you're using sunflower oil. And then coconut would be the oil of choice for really high pitta because it's a very cooling oil and it helps to pacify heat in the body, pitta specifically. Um, so now what I would like to share with you is that as part of the daily application of oil to the whole body, we also want to put oil in the nose and in the ears. So oil administered into the nose is called nasya, and it's not specifically oil, it's more the idea that we're administering medicine or herbs through the nasal passage to treat the nervous system and the mind-brain um, complex. So you can do that in a few ways. You can use powders or oils or juices from different um, substances. But what I really like to use is called Super Nasya and uh, Dr. Ladd's wife Usha makes it. And I love it, it's my favorite. There's many different brands of Nasya oil. This, this one just happens to be my favorite. And I love her and otherwise I won't give favorites to anybody except for, no, I'm just kidding. Um, and then also making sure that you get oil into the ears. And again, you can do that in two ways. You can pour oil into the ear, let the ear fill, or you can just apply oil to your pinky and massage inside the nose. 
similar to the nausea, you can apply a few drops into each nostril or you can just massage inside the nose. It just depends on um, lots of things, but one of them, and most importantly, is your comfort level. Um, because if you're not comfortable with the practice, you're not gonna do it, so do it in a way that makes sense to you and doesn't feel like you're putting yourself at risk in any way. Um, so now I just wanna share with you a little bit. I won't go through a whole um, oil application because there are many, many resources for you to find that. Really, I just wanna show you some of what are the most important things to remember when you are doing your own Abhyanga practice. Um, like I said, traditionally it's done in Panchakarma with two therapists who are working in synchronized strokes to help pull and move lymphatic fluid and toxins away from the extremities and back to the digestive system where it can be safely eliminated. Um, as part of your daily routine, you still want to adhere to um, the flow and direction of these strokes. So we will share that with you now. Okay, so um, before you get started with your Abhyanga, there's a few things that I think are important to keep in mind. One is that you dedicate a towel to your Abhyanga practice and it probably won't last longer than a few months. Um, but oil spreads and it spreads easily and quickly. So it's a good idea just to dedicate one, um, one bath towel that you're using for that practice. I also like to keep with me um, a little hand towel or a damp washcloth so that I can just wipe my hands as I'm picking up the bottle or maybe I'm gonna move into the shower, whatever it is, I just have something to, to wipe my hands. So I like to have those two things handy. Then of course I wanna have the oils that I'm gonna use handy. I like to use a Vata Pitta kind of blend. Um, and I always like to have my Mahanarayan oil handy because even if I just slept wrong or if I have any joints that are bothering me, I have it with me and it's always there for me to use. And then of course your nausea oil or whatever oil you're gonna put in the nose and that could just be the same massage oil that you're using. The other thing that you wanna consider is that you want the oil to be warm so that it absorbs into the skin easier. And so the thing that I like to do the best is to heat a kettle of water and then pour hot water into a mug and then I've got my oil in my little handy squeeze bottle and I just let it sit in there for five or 10 minutes as I'm setting up the rest of the space. So, I'm just gonna set this stuff out of the way. And I'm gonna lay my towel down. And I have a bolster that I use under my neck to apply the nausea. We won't necessarily use that today, but I'll show you. And a pillow works just fine. So, like I said, we wanna start with the head first. So, lying down with your head on that pillow. And you can start with nausea. I'm just gonna do an empty bottle. And you wanna just lie so that your chin is up, head is back, and then you just apply a few drops to each nostril. The other thing you can do is just to apply some into your hand and then massage inside each nostril. And I'm being kind here, but you really want to get up as far as you can and massage the septum, which is that piece of cartilage um, in the middle of the nose. Uh, and then you would move to your hair. And you want to just, again, apply oil right to the scalp line, maybe two times one and back. And then just distribute that oil all through the hair. So long strokes back. And to help um, activate all the different parts of the brain, just to do some stimulating kind of scrubbing all over the scalp. And then come to the, to the face and massage the face. And it's nice to do some circular movements on the forehead and then some kind of sweeping movements over the nose and the lips, sort of like that and then also massaging the, the eyebrows. Then you're gonna turn your head to one side and with a little oil on your pinky finger, you just massage inside the ear. And again, as far down in there as you can get and just really get the whole ear canal coated with oil and massage you know, sort of on both sides of the ear as well to help that oil go down in there deeper. 
And then you want to come to the extremities, whether that's the arm or the feet. And I think it's a good idea to apply oil to the whole body first and then come back and do the strokes. So we'll just imagine that I have applied oil to every part of my body. And now I just want to show you that these are the same strokes that you would use on the arms or the same on the legs. So you want to just do some pulling so that you're moving against the grain of your hair. And when you're pulling towards the heart and against the grain of the hair, you want to use a little bit more pressure than when you go down. So pressure and then soft, pressure and then soft. And that helps the oil get picked up by the, the end of the hair and pulled up by the nerve ending and then distributed throughout the whole body. So long pulling strokes on all of the long bones. So the forearm, again, we wanna pull all of this lymph and fluid and toxins. We wanna to suggest for everybody to move back towards the digestive system. And then over all of the joints, you wanna make sure that you're using circular motion. So just going around each of those joints. So same thing on both sides. And the same thing for the elbows, you wanna use circular motions. And then again, there's all of these joints on the toes and the feet. And again, you wanna go circular over each joint and then do just a little bit of pulling on the tip. So circular over the joints and then a little pull on the tip. Same thing for the toes, circular movements over the big joints and then a little pulling. Um, so those are, I think, are the things that are the most important to keep in mind as you're doing the abhyanga. You want to start with those extremities and then move towards the abdomen. And when you're on your abdomen, you want to make sure that you're moving with the digestive system. So down over here in this lower right quadrant of the abdomen, is where the small intestines dump food into the large intestines. And then the large intestines kind of go up and around like this. And so when you have oil, you wanna do, you know, you can start with small little movements and then circle out into bigger movements, but you always wanna move clockwise as if there was a clock laying on your belly, 12 o'clock is here, six o'clock is here, and moving clockwise around the digestive system. And you can even do a little bit of shaking to help those toxins further um, release in the digestive system. And if you're constipated or if you have any sticky stools, it's a good idea to do this sort of shaking action. And get as deep as you comfortably can. If you're holding stool, if there's stool impacted in any part of the digestive system, you will want you might feel a little pain. So just be, be gentle there. All right, so that's the abdomen. And then again, on the sides, because there's so many lymph nodes in this part of the body, you also just want to be pulling up as you stroke and like pulling towards the front of the body. So that same action on both sides. And both ladies and gentlemen, it's really important that you massage the breast tissue. So sort of back and forth on either one. A little action like that. And then again, you can do circular motions over the breasts. Lots of lymphatic tissue there, so it's important that it gets stimulated. You stimulate the heart as well. Make sure that you get the sides of the shoulder with this sort of up and down stroke. And then you wanna make sure you get your thyroid gland. I like to use opposite hand for opposite sides of the body because it helps with brain function. So just massaging also the thyroid gland, maybe doing a little thymus tapping and then making sure that you get all of the joints along the back of the neck as well. Sort of moving everything up towards the top of the head. And same thing on the throat, moving everything towards the top. Um, so I think those are probably the most important things that you should know about doing Abhyanga. The most important thing is just get it on. Whenever you have time, just get a little bit of oil on the body again the belly, the soles of the feet, and the scalp are what Dr. Lab mentions are the most important if you don't have time to do the whole massage. Um, and then just, if you have time, sit for five or 10 minutes and allow the oil to be absorbed into the body. Listen to a meditation or maybe journal. It's a good time to just be still. 
I hope you uh, enjoyed that short, brief demonstration of Abhyanga. Um, even more, I hope that it encourages you or excites you to try it. Um, and I just want to say that on this Ayurveda day, that no matter what you do, that you just take a moment to recognize your own inner wisdom and that you find ways to be able to hear that wisdom.